At the moment, in the world of the good old graphics card, there is a serious problem, and that is to the likes that we are in the Dark Ages. When it comes to trying to buy one of these things right now, you can go onto eBay, you can log on to your local marketplace, and you type in, say for instance, RTX 3000. I've seen that NVIDIA, they've, they've got this great card that's coming out, you know, better than a 2080 Super and it's a 3060 Ti, but then you look at the price and you're like, whoa, scratching your head, you're like, uh, th I'm, last time I checked, I'm not living in Venezuela. I mean, if you are living in Venezuela, then I feel sorry for you because they're suffering from a thing called hyperinflation. That's when the prices of everything is just going out of control. And in the world of graphics cards, the prices of graphics cards have gone out of control, especially for RTX 3000 series cards, which in tomorrow's video, we'll be taking a close look as to why that is exactly. But in the meantime, I've said in the past what you can do. Actually, in the recent months, I've made a couple of videos, I'll put the link up here, about what you can do in these dark times if you wanna get yourself a gaming graphics card for at least a decent price and still play games. But what if you're buying a used card? Because part of that is buying a used graphics card. That's where the best value is going to be, even with these overpriced cards out there on the market. But if you're buying a used graphics card, I've got today a full guide on what you can do and how to make sure you don't get hosed. And basically when you get hosed, that's when you've been left outside with a tap running all over you. You're getting hosed down essentially. And no one wants to get hosed down, especially in the winter. So let's look at some ways that you can avoid losing your money and getting completely scammed in the world of used graphics cards. If you've got this annoying Windows needs activation message and you wanna get rid of it for cheap, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as 14 bucks, after you use the coupon code BFTYC, you can get yourself a legit single end user Windows 10 license today. Links in the description below. So let's get into tip number one, and that is when you're buying a used graphics card, check the quality of the actual cooler on board. I've got two cards in my hand here to illustrate this point in perfect daylight. And that is this card right here, the Sapphire, it's had some serious usage. And the way we can tell by that is by looking inside the card and we can see that the fins on the cooler have corrosion. Now, if this corrosion is the likes that you've never seen before, it looks absolutely disgusting. I would recommend actually staying away from that card because that's an indicator that it's been not only heavily used, but the rust itself may drop onto the card and short something out in due time. And I've seen this actually with one of these cards here before, that it's been in much worse condition than this, and it hasn't lasted long at all. I think it had two months life left in it, and then I had to replace it, because I guarantee my PCs for three months. So this card here on the left, we're gonna look at this. This one looks like it's pretty much brand new in that it hasn't had much usage. We can tell by just looking at the general state of the card. The fins on the GPU cooler look like they would be like a card that's just come out of the box. In other words, this card hasn't had much usage. So that alone is the first telltale sign of usage, but there's also another thing as well, and that is if someone lives near the ocean, they can get a lot of uh, salt in the air and that can fast forward corrosion very quickly to the point where I've heard of stories from local retailers here where PCs have come back even six months later from someone living right near the beach and the computer has been pretty much corroded. And they can't guarantee that because that's not what they call fair wear and tear. Though in the case of this RX 580 right here, this four gigabyte model, this is a perfect scenario of a card that with its four gigabytes of VRAM is no longer desirable for Ethereum miners. So it's had a medium term usage. And of course, with that, it probably has a medium term left of life left in it. So this segues perfectly into point number two, with the older the card and the less efficient it is, as well as the lower VRAM count that it has, we're mainly looking at four gigabytes and under, that card is gonna be way less desirable for cryptocurrency miners than the cards like the new RTX 3000 series, for example. So when we don't have that demand for these GPUs from the crypto miners, that leaves the prices in the realm of more normal or realistic for someone who just wants to game on it. So if you're looking for a GPU right now, RX 470s, 574 gig models, and of course 1050 Ti's, and even the 1063 gigabyte are going to give you some of the best price performance out there in the market. So let's move into the next point, and this one is a big one for buying used graphics cards, a huge point, and that is 
to make sure the card works, especially if you're gonna pick this thing up, for instance, like I do off Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree where the deals are local. I can go and meet the person, validate that the card works. So if anything, if you're going to buy a used GPU and you're gonna go pick it up, or even if you're buying it online and it's a used graphics card, get confirmation that it works. Are there a photo of just say a quick heaven benchmark pulled up with the driver displaying that it's installed correctly or seeing it physically in person working. And this is one thing that I am not without fail missing when I pick up a used GPU. That is getting confirmation of that card working. Because recently I've been uh, hit up with a few messages privately from people saying, Brian, I just bought a GPU and when I install it, I'm just not getting a signal once it gets to Windows. And I said to that person, my reply was, dude, you got hosed. And he said, well, the guy told me it was working when I went to pick it up. And that is the most common excuse you are going to hear when you go to pick up a used GPU from someone who knows it doesn't work, but they just wanna get money and scam you. They're going to say to you, oh, it was working when I last pulled it out of my PC. In other words, they somehow magically think that a graphics card is gonna go faulty from the time that they pulled it out months ago when it was actually faulty and the time that you get it and you put it in your PC. They want you to believe that. They want you to be that gullible. And trust me, I've pulled out a lot of different graphics cards out of systems that have been working. And when I put them back in the system, 100% of the time, they've been working. So that excuse is just complete BS. Do not believe it. If you get hosed, this is the thing, the next point that we're gonna pull up. If you get hosed on a deal, make sure you know where that person is and make sure you can get a refund. Get that in confirmation. Say, look, if this card doesn't work and I get it home, can I bring it back and get a refund? That's if they're not gonna show you the card working. And this is the funny thing about going into the latter half of 2020 last year and now coming into 2021, I'm hearing so many more reports of people getting scammed and hosed. So don't be that person. Look for the warning signs. If someone's not gonna show you that graphics card up and running, or they're not gonna give you proof that it works, or even some kind of guarantee, which the good thing about buying off eBay, for example, if you buy a graphics card and it says that it works and you get it and it doesn't work, you can at least get your money back, you've got that guarantee there. But of course, you're probably gonna pay a higher price due to eBay fees and stuff like that. But if we look at that, make sure when you're buying these cards, that you're getting either a guarantee or you're seeing the card physically working. That's what I'm doing personally now. I recommend heavily doing that, coupled with that point of checking out the card itself, making sure that there's not too much corrosion on it. Now, another thing you can do is if you quickly look inside, sometimes you can see these capacitors here. So you can take a look inside the card as well. If you see right in the card, for instance, the top of the capacitors are bulging out of control or things just don't look right as well, it's just better to be safe than sorry. Now the last point I'm going to make in relation to seeing the card working, this is an important one. Make sure you're not buying a card where they've just put the graphics card in the computer and it's got the Microsoft Display Adapter Driver installed. So in other words, people say, oh yeah, the card works and then they'll show you it working but if it doesn't have the proper driver installed, there's a risk that that card is faulty. And this is probably the most common problem I've seen with GPUs that are working, but they actually don't. And that is once you install the driver, the scale is actually faulty or something else on the card is inherently faulty and that causes the screen to just turn black and the card's essentially worthless. I mean, I have in the past, and I'll put the link up here, as a last resort, put a heat gun or even put GPUs in the oven. And I find the percentage rate of that working, I'd say is in the vicinity of around 10%. So I get one in every 10 cards back to life. And then even out of those 10% of cards that come back to life, I'd say half of them just pretty much go kabonkers five minutes later. Though the next point when it comes to buying a graphics card is something that I do personally, but I know in the world there's a lot of different ways of doing this because it depends on where you live locally and it depends on your culture. And that is that I'll only pick up cards locally here when I'm going to someone's house or their address. I will not meet someone down at the gas station because I made a parody video on this in the past and it's just something that every time in Australia when I've heard of people meeting down at the gas station or the petrol station, there's getting sold some sort of junk. So it's just something that I do both ways. And that is because if there's something wrong, you can talk it over and you can help each other out. If you meet someone down at the gas station and you get hosed, I'm pretty sure they're just gonna block you and move on because there's pretty much no recourse for them. That's how a lot of people get scammed. But at that same time, I know there's a lot of people in the United States 
that's just part of their culture, for example. That's where people meet usually at the gas station. So in that case, you'll wanna be getting some video proof on the phone just quickly to make sure that that graphics card works or something like that. Or of course, bring your own. I've even heard of guys out there who have like a van and they've got a mobile testing station. If someone's got a photo of a mobile testing station to test GPUs, show me that setup. I'd love to see that. Now, another important thing, and this is point number four that we're gonna go onto here, and that is something that I've covered in the past. And it's a pretty much a rule of thumb when it comes to uh, PC hustling in general and finding the best deals. And that is if something is too good to be true, then it usually is. And we took a look at this exact example. I made a dedicated video on this with a, I think it was a 1050 Ti that came up for sale. And people were telling me, Brian, you gotta check this out. Look at this, it's such a good deal. And I said, it's too good to be true, it's a scam. And that kind of caused some upheaval in the comments section. People were like, what if it's legit? And I just said, guys, been there, done that, seen it all before. And then sure enough, someone, like, someone a week later just said, yeah, I got my money back because it was a scam. And especially if the photos match up to looking like that. Say for instance, you've seen a photo of an RTX 3060 Ti and it comes up for sale for $300 locally and the photo is just professionally taken. It looks amazing. That guy knows how to take a photo. He knows what the price of that card's really worth. Why is he selling it for 300 USD when he can easily get 500 for it? So always ask yourself that in the back of your head, why is this person selling this product if it looks like it's too good to be true? That being said, you can get some extremely good deals, but the ones that I get, I always go suss them out in person and make sure that I'm getting a good deal to begin with and I'm not getting hosed. Because usually, and this is a trend with these kinds of scams, when someone's selling a deal that's too good to be true is that they'll ask you to deposit money into their bank before they send the item to you. And then essentially you'll either get a letter in the mail with nothing or you'll get a brick or you just won't get a product at all. And this last point is for those guys who do want to ignore the previous advice and meet someone at a gas station. This is the last thing I'm gonna say is if someone's giving you a graphics card in a box always open the box and make sure you're getting what you're buying. Because I've heard of in the past people meeting people at public places, I haven't seen it myself, but they essentially say, for instance, buy a 2060 Super, but what's really in that box is like a GT 640. And so they've been hosed because they haven't opened up the box and checked the content. And the person's even showed them a video of the card working with the device manager. So if you're meeting someone at a public place, be sure to make sure you're getting the graphics card that you're actually purchasing. And believe me, this is what I'm saying before, these scams, they happen. Sooner or later, if you're dealing with used parts consistently, you are either gonna see it personally or you're gonna know someone personally who has been scammed or hosed. And it's a sad thing, I hate the practice. I just think it's disgusting that it exists, but it does exist and you have to navigate your way. As always, and like I say on the channel, you have to navigate your way through the murky waters. And now we're getting to the final point. And this one is one that I have never said on the channel before, but I love sharing every tip and trick with you guys because it's what I do here at Tech Yes City. You guys support the yes man every time you drop a comment, you hit the like button, you watch the videos. So we're gonna give you the last one. This is the super secret source. And that is when you get that graphics card, especially if you bought it online, this is a really good one. If you've got a little bit of time to check this, put the card in your PC. And then I want you to go with MSI Afterburner and try and overclock the memory. Now, if the card has been from a miner, the most common problem is that the memory is gonna fail on that GPU. If miners have been using these cards and they've been dropping the core limits, they've been dropping the power limits, but they've been upping the memory speeds, then the most logical point of fail, even if they've taken really good care of those cards, is the GDDR5 or 5X or 6 or even now 6X, that memory is going to degrade over time faster than the other components. So what you can do is when you get one of these cards, say it's an RX 570 or it's an RX 584 gig, is you can just load up MSI Afterburner. First of all, you can run a benchmark in Unigine Heaven. Next thing you can do is start to up the memory clock of the graphics card itself. Now, if that graphics card, if you literally just touch the dial and up it a little bit and the whole computer crashes, that card probably doesn't have a whole lot of life left in terms of its GDDR5 or 5X memory and the speeds that it's offering. Because when you up it a little bit, it means that the card's unstable. It means that the memory's probably degraded a lot faster than you think. And I've seen this in the past 
where I've had an RX 470 come through here, for example, and the memory speeds haven't really worked properly even out of the box. But when I've downclocked the memory, it's then worked absolutely fine. Now, of course, if you're using this for yourself or you're building a mega computer on the cheap, you can get away with paying a lot less for these cards, but you may just have to manually set in a memory downclock profile for these cards, or especially if the card is looking like it's in extremely good condition and the mine has taken really good care of it over its life, you can still get an indicator of how long a life left that card realistically has. Because make no mistake about it, if you get one of these cards and it's degraded so hard, so fast, and for instance, it's had a custom BIOS put on it, then that custom BIOS may work for mining. But when you load up the default BIOS, which is needed for PC gaming, if you load up that BIOS after the fact and the card starts crashing, if it crashes on boot, then that Gravis card is almost as good as useless. So that's the problem that I've seen in the past with some of these cards that have been heavily mined on. So that's my main complaint about buying a card from the miners. And that is, has the memory been worked so hard for so long that the card doesn't have a whole lot of life left in it? So be careful because when you load up those custom BIOSes, the card then displays a triangle with an exclamation mark. And especially if you want to flip that PC and someone reinstalls, if you, even if you put on some custom drivers that circumvent that problem, and they update their drivers in the future and they reinstall things, the card will be faulty and you'll be getting complaints about it. So that's one thing about buying a used GPU that I don't think I've shared in the history of the channel. So hopefully that tip helps a lot of you guys through those murky waters. And without a side, if you've enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. But also let us know uh, your tips and tricks as well. If you've got any tips or tricks, then do let us know in the comment section below. If there's anything that I've missed in this video, then be sure to share that and help people out to get into the world of PC gaming, especially if you're on a budget and you can't afford much. This is what I love. I love helping people out and giving them a good advice so they can enjoy PC gaming and get through these dark times with not just the graphics card crypto mining situation, but also the world pandemic as well. One thing I wanna do is help you guys out any way I can. So anyway, with that aside, we got the question of the day here, which comes from Louis Dugal. And they ask, what spray do you use for cleaning parts? This question comes in a lot. And I think sometimes we've got to refresh it for the new guys around here. I use most of the time multi-purpose spray. This is my go-to spray gives it that new look shine, cleans off, especially with a graphics card like this, it'll clean off a lot of that corrosion as well, especially if you've got a little bit of time and you wanna use a brush and brush all that corrosion off, it then protects the product as well. And the good thing is it's non-capacitive, non-conductive. It will also not cause any harm to your electronics. I do as well, if it's a GPU die and it's had a bad uh, application of thermal paste applied, I will then use brake clean, but be careful with brake clean. It can be capacitive and or conductive and it can cause harm to your PC parts if you don't dry all that off. But this stuff right here, the multi-purpose spray, I think this is in Australia only. If you're overseas, there are some alternatives like WD-40, CRC-556, I believe. So in terms of getting the spray that you like, your mileage may vary. This one for me is only three Aussie dollars, a full massive size can of it, lasts me for ages, extremely good value. And I get it from the discount store locally here. And now we're at conclusion time, where if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech, yes, content, and you wanna see it the moment it drops here, then be sure to hit that sub button if you haven't already, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.